Well, as an old Master Chief of mine used to say, it's another fine, fine Navy day full of promise and opportunity. Sunrise has always been one of my favorite times of the day. It's uh, God giving you another chance, another day. Got to make the most of it. I just love all the colors right before dawn, the pinks and the purples and the blues and the lavenders. It's just all of God's creation on display all in one beautiful moment. So hope I have another great day today here at Ocean Lakes in beautiful Surfside Beach, South Carolina. We're here at uh, Ocean Lakes Campground here in Surfside Beach, South Carolina. And as you can see from the silver gleaming in the sunshine, the flock has begun to gather again. This is for our Airstream Club rally. Uh, we're part of the Carolinas Airstream Club. It's uh, Unit 21 in Region 3. So we'll have about 50 rigs here all together. We're part of the uh, early arrivals group. We, we got here um, we got here Sunday and the rally actually starts on Thursday. So we have a couple of days to get some sort of mundane stuff done. Uh, laundry oil changes, all the normal day-to-day -day stuff that the flock has begun to gather. Hi guys. I'm Warren. I'm Maureen. And we are RV Dairy yet. We're coming to you from beautiful Surfside Beach, South Carolina. We're here at the Ocean Lakes Family Campground uh, for our Carolina's Airstream Club rally. Uh, we've had a great week here uh, reconnecting with old friends and, and meeting some new folks and just generally having a good time. We had uh, really good weather early in the week. It's kind of a little bit uh, chilly and windy uh, today. but uh, I call it more a bit brisk. It's, it's, a, it's, brisk. it's, it's invigorating. Let's yeah. put it that uh, way. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, so this weekend is a big milestone for us. It marks uh, one full month one. of uh, full-time RV living. And uh, there's some things, at least uh, from my standpoint, that have been that have gone well. There's some things that have been uh, more than a little bit surprising, and uh, there's there's just still some things that are challenges. So you want to talk about it from your side first? From my side, I would say the uh, most surprising, um, or actually good things that have happened, is that the bus has really not had any mechanical issues. It hasn't had uh, everything. Is, it continues to work well. Uh, you know, I would think at a month's time we would have an issue come up, or um, but we usually anticipate waiting for that other shoe to drop. Uh, but that's been a, a very pleasant surprise. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think way. a part of that too is is related to uh, the previous owner. Our, our, the previous owner of this bus was um, was very meticulous, uh, upkeep spared no expense really to to make sure things were kept in top notch condition, and so that's allowed us to come on the road without immediately. Uh, facing big repair bills and, and, and that sort of stuff. So that's that's been a real that's been I a think real it's plus. Definitely. And I'm I'm So very, what about what about a surprise? The surprise I think overall is storage. Mm -hmm. Um that has been again it's not been as much of a problem as like most Yeah, people. because we proved that Corel is in fact not unbreakable. Yeah. So uh, some that? of those dishes uh, <laughs> some dishes shifted even Anna closed and, and didn't, I mean, it didn't happen on the road, but you have to be careful when you open up doors and drawers um, once you get to your uh, stopping point, your your uh, destination. Yeah. So uh, we, we had because a bit of a... the thing that was advertised as unbreakable I, was well, in fact I, breakable. I, at this point, I know it. it's one of those instances that... I guess with anything can break if it's yeah. if it's hit hard enough. So um, it took a little bit of a tumble, but anyway, it, it worked out, okay. and we're so, on to new things. All right. So for um, for me, the thing is again, I would agree that the biggest plus has been uh, that nothing's broken on the bus. Everything's running smoothly. That's been really good. The uh, biggest surprise to me has been Bo how Bo has uh, taken to traveling and RV living. He's really taken to it just like uh, sopping up gravy with a biscuit. Uh, he is a rescue, and uh, we talked about that in the kind of a previous video, and he hadn't been around a lot of people. And then now all so of a sudden- that was a bit of an unknown. That was a bit of an unknown. So. And now he's, he's basically surrounded by strangers all day, every day. 
and he he's taken he's to it really, it. really, really. Yeah. Well. I'm really proud he's, of he's, him. He's 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 really. Now he's kind of fifty fifty on the other on the other dogs. Which I can, we're, we're, we're sort of we're, yeah, we're sort of trying on. to you know help him move along and you know make sure that you always have to be careful when you're meeting new dogs anyway whether it's just passing on the street yeah. or if you're on the road but he really um, he enjoys riding mm -hmm. so we've had the golf cart this week and it's been uh, nice to be able to take him and he just hops right on he knows where he's going so yep. it's a it's a really great thing that he has really become more of a of a he's a traveling dog yep yeah. and then we have. I would say two um, ongoing challenges we're still in the midst of trying to, to sort out. The first one is uh, getting prescription medicines on the road. Mm -hmm. uh, what we've sort of figured out is that the system, uh, the prescription medicine system, is really oriented around somebody that, living in a sticks and breaks that goes to the same pharmacy all the time. And for perfectly valid reasons, I mean, they want to make sure you don't, uh, double fill prescriptions, especially for controlled substances, and I get all that. But uh, trying to figure out the best way to do prescription medicines on the road has been has been it's a challenge, and we'll 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 do more on that in the in the future. When we get further along, is trying to get things yeah. solved. But right now, we're we're just uh, we're hoping that we'll be able we'll be able to share those um, with you. Yeah, and I think the uh, the second challenge that we're trying to work our way through is uh, mobile connectivity mobile internet uh when you going in that the uh, mobile internet was never going to be as good as uh home internet um but we're kind of working through the exact setup we want to use we have a wi-fi ranger up in the cabinet and it amplifies any available wi-fi signal but campground wi-fi is it's not really a great solution it's an open network uh so there's security issues there uh, it, the service is spotty the, the speeds can be slow if you have a bunch of people in the campground trying to stream or that sort of thing mm -hmm. uh, we purchased a Verizon uh, MiFi so we can get cellular data and that seems to have worked really well so far uh, we haven't been outside the uh, Verizon service yeah, area uh, the only issue there is we're just using so much data so quickly so we've got to kind of you know figure our way through the the uh, mobile internet issue but that seems to be kind of a common thing that, that, that people face but uh overall oh i would you do it again uh, oh absolutely there hands okay. down it's this is home this is uh new adventures you know we try to look at it new day and try to learn uh what you know the problems that hit us we can just keep on moving with it so you have to have a good positive attitude yeah and uh just looking at all the options that are available. We were here uh, yesterday afternoon at a campsite and uh, one of our Airstream friends had brought over a, a picture book of their trip to Alaska last summer. And it's very, uh, very inspiring uh, thinking about maybe making that trip. Oh, definitely. You know, uh, he's, he's been wanting me to do Alaska, but, but we're, we're going to, we're going to uh, be on the more of the east side of the coast. So, but there is a definite, uh, from seeing those pictures, a plus of, of seeing Alaska because it is an absolutely beautiful oh, yeah. state. And, uh, there's, a, there's a lot of things to see and do. Mm -hmm, absolutely. All right. So from so, here, we'll be headed up uh, the coast a little bit into uh, North Carolina, mm -hmm. going up to Wilmington, North Carolina for a bit. And we'll hopefully bring you some sights and interesting things to do from the Wilmington, North Carolina area. Yep. The Grand Strand is an arc of beachland on the Atlantic coast in South Carolina. Extending more than 60 miles from Little River to Winyah Bay, it's located in Ory and Georgetown counties on the northeast South Carolina coast. The term Grand Strand dates back to a November 19, 1949 Myrtle Beach Sun column titled From the Grand Stand and another titled Quote, from the Grand Strand on December 3rd, 1949, in the Myrtle Beach News. And the, the name just kind of stuck from there, and it's been used in marketing ever since. The area has become a major tourist attraction along the southeast coast, with its primary city, Myrtle Beach, attracting over 10 million visitors each season. Myrtle Beach is a great vacation destination, especially for those with uh, young children and, and teens, as there's a wealth of things to do. Uh, shops, attractions. Uh, I remember when we were kids, we would come down and go to the uh, golf cart rides, the putt-putt, 
There's uh, uh, aquarium, wax museum, tons and tons of places to eat. We were joking yesterday that uh, you could probably eat somewhere different here in Myrtle Beach for a year and never hit the same place twice. And if you're really into pancakes or all-you-can-eat seafood buffets, this is the place for you because they are literally everywhere. We rode up to Calabash, North Carolina, uh, which is uh, just north of Myrtle Beach and really well known for seafood right fresh off the boat. Uh, stopped there at uh, Nance's uh, Seafood Restaurant, had a wonderful lunch. Mm. My mouth is watering. <laughs> mm, mm, mm. Looks like you picked a good place, though. Yeah, I think it's not nice. Waterfront seafood shack over there. I bring her to Calabash, North Carolina, the global epicenter of Carolina seafood, the literal birthplace of Calabash style seafood. And she gets a Maryland crab cake sandwich. This is like going to a barbecue restaurant in Lexington, North Carolina, and getting a cheeseburger. <laughs> but whatever makes her happy, makes her happy. We have our Airstream Club rallies here at the Ocean Lakes Family Campground in uh, Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. We usually have uh, two a year, one in the spring and one in the fall. Uh, it's a wonderful facility. It was built uh, by Mary Emily and Nelson Jackson, along with their five daughters. Started in 1970. Uh, it opened on July the 2nd, 1971, with 30 campsites and one bathhouse. Uh, today, Ocean Lakes features uh, 859 campsites, 2,569 annual lease sites. Those are the houses on the property. It sits on 310 oceanfront acres with nearly a mile of beachfront. Uh, they have more than 550 employees, and it's the largest campground on the East Coast and one of the largest in the United States. Um, there's a lot to do here. Uh, great facility uh, during the summertime for kids. There's pools, there's splash mountains, there's uh, just all kinds of activities going on. So it's a great facility. Uh, we really enjoy having our rallies here. For tent campers and those with uh, small bathrooms in their rigs, uh, there are some really nice bathhouses on the property, and this is uh, showing a typical uh, bathhouse here at Ocean Lakes. As an RVer, one of the great things about Ocean Lakes is they have, the way they have their sites set up. They're all full hookup sites, uh, concrete, so it's on a hard surface and they're angled off of the uh, campground road, so it's a much easier entry and exit than one that's 90 degrees uh, off of the road. Uh, decent space around, mostly flat, uh, very close to the beach. You just can't beat it. It's, it's a great, great facility. We're still a little uh, COVID cautious, so we don't like to go to very crowded restaurants. Uh, if we go out to eat, we either want to eat outside on a deck as we did it in the Calabash, or we'll go during lunchtime when it's much less crowded. Uh, we chose to go to Taco Mundo, which is up at Barefoot Landing, which is a collection of uh, shops and restaurants and other attractions located around a series of man-made lakes, and it's right next to the Intercoastal Waterway. Is a really nice place to eat. They have um, obviously tacos, but they have premium tacos, uh, barbecue southern brisket, a crab cake taco, uh, surf and turf, which is carne asada with the uh, grilled shrimp and green chili sauce, firecracker shrimp taco, tempura shrimp taco. So all in all, it's a very good place to eat. We've thoroughly enjoyed it. Highly recommend it. This is Maureen's pet flamingo that she brings out for all the rallies. Her name is Penelope. Remember Penelope Pit Stop? 
from the old Dick Dastardly and the Wacky Racers. Well, this is Penelope. Thanks a lot, guys. Appreciate you uh, watching our video. Hope you'll like it, subscribe, and click the bell for future not for notifications of any future videos. And uh, if you have any comments, uh, suggestions, please put them in the comment section below. So thanks again. Thanks again. We'll see you next week.